Welcome to Solid Camp Professor. I'm Sydney, your Solid Camp Professor, and in this session we'll be doing part three of our lesson on pocket machining. In my previous lesson, we completed machining down to this level over here, the entire pocket, including our finished operation. Now I'd like to go down to the next step. So what I'll do is start a new pocket operation and when I go to my geometry what I have to do is I have to create a geometry where the outside boundary is over here around the part and the islands is my second and third geometry around now I can either choose this one at a time by constant Z or I can simply go into multiple chain multi chain which is what I'll do simply click on the floor itself and that will automatically build my chain boundaries for the pocket machining and I'll simply accept that the next thing I have to do is obviously pick my tool so I'll go down to tools and pick the tool and I'll be using my 10 millimeter and mill for the part itself my levels my upper level in this particular case will be this step over here since I've already machined down up until that level itself and my pocket depth will be up until the floor here itself notice over here it says minus 20 at my Z level when I get over to here my pocket depth it shows me 12 that's 12 millimeters underneath my upper level of minus 8 now in my technology area again I'll be using thy contour option for uh, milling out the pocket and I'll use 65 percent I'll leave a wall offset of 0.3 millimeters and over here I also have to do an island offset if I want to go to the island exactly to the very finish of it I'll just leave it at zero but if I want to do an offset I can also do an offset here notice I have complete control of my wall offset and island offset now my floor I'll give 0 0.15 for floor offset and finish the floor with this tool now in my link area I just choose the option of going in in a helical or you know what I'll even choose the option of doing linear linear will allow me to go back and forth in a specific angle but I can also choose the length of the angle that I want to go into say I'll do a length of three millimeters in other words it's going to actually do a zigzag back and forth until it gets down to the bottom of the area as shown over here the length will be this angle that you will see from here up until that point I'll simply do now save and calculate and simulate and if I use my solid verify simulation you'll note that the tool goes back and forth into the part itself and then clears out the entire floor as shown over here but you'll note there are certain areas that could not be machined because the tool did not have enough room to go through there so that would deal with rest material so I'll go back to my operation click on save and copy to create a new operation and this time I'll use a smaller tool for the finish say my 8 millimeter end mill my levels will be the same as before in my technology area I'll have an offset of zero in every one of those fields and I will do what we call I'll get rid of the floor because I'll be going down to the floor I'll go down to my rest material area choose rest and in my data area I'll choose the option of around profile since I want to work just on the profiles itself just on the walls themselves to finish those up in my previous tool diameter I can simply write here 10 millimeters and then do just simply OK in my links now again my lead in can now be an arc my lead out will be the same and then I'll do save and calculate now you'll see again in my simulation that the tool will go down and clear out the rest of those areas finishing the entire 
inside pocket as shown here. Now, I'd like to go back for a moment to this particular operation that we did over here in my previous lesson. And let's just take a look at the simulation from this point. If I take a look at the simulation, what I don't like what's happening now in this finish cut is that my tool is going down, that when it gets to the final level, there's still material over here, and it's going directly down onto that material. I prefer that we go down into the empty area. In other words, the first machine this area out. So what I can do is as follows. I can simply take this rough cut that I've done for this area over here and simply drag it before that pocket itself. Now when I do my simulation for this pocket here, since that operation was already done, and I'll do now again solve verify, and as you can see, my, uh, my solve verify has updated itself. My tool now will go down, as shown here, but this time when it goes down to the next level, it does not go down on the material itself. That concludes our lessons on pocket machining. Thank you for joining us on SolidCam Professor. Take care and have a nice day.